Good morning, this is Oriel. Welcome to my book talk. I'm going to start by telling you a story about my son, Charlie. When Charlie was in grade two, he was always losing his mitts in the winter. And one morning he couldn't find any of his mitts to wear to school, so he wore a pair of mine. He chose the pink stretchy ones that were called magic gloves. Later that day, I got a phone call from the school saying that my son had headbutted another child. They explained that he was being taunted and teased for wearing pink mitts by the other kids at recess. They told me that his behavior was inappropriate and that I should dress him more appropriately for school. I want you to think about Charlie's experience. I want you to think about my experience as a parent. I want you to think about how children are socialized very early to identify color with gender. Pink is for Boys by Rob Perlman is illustrated by Ada Caban. It builds upon the kindergartner's knowledge of colors. Our textbook supports the use of this book because it expands gender and sexual identity. Pink is for Boys age appropriately discusses options beyond binary gender stereotypes. This book is important in the Critical Literacy Library because the authors of our text give us this quote, when we remove gender expectations, we increase identity options and decrease the gender-based harassment that many learners continue to experience as they navigate their peer cultures. Pink is for Boys uses familiar words, repetitive phrases, the color word and the illustration represent the color visually to help early readers use multiple cues to understand and figure out the text during shared reading and provide scaffolding in the child's zone of proximal development toward independent reading. Pink is for Boys takes off two areas of the kindergarten program of studies. First, in early literacy, it meets the general outcome of the child listens, speaks, reads, writes, views, and represents to comprehend and respond personally and critically to oral, print, and other media texts. The specific outcome under uses strategies and cues is to use textual cues to begin to identify some individual words in texts that have been read aloud. The second is under the citizenship and identity category number K1, I am unique. The specific outcome is the child is able to reflect upon how can we show respect and acceptance of people as they are. Pink is for Boys does not have a main character or a real plot line, but Burnett and Mer Merchant in their 2019 article tell us that meanings are not contained within texts, but negotiated between readers and writers in situated contexts. This book lends itself nicely to follow-up activities. For example, printable activities are easily found by Googling Pink is for Boys activity worksheets. Just keep in mind your learning goal when choosing from these. And of course we need to give credit where credit is due. So these are my references that I used to research this book talk. These are my photo credits. In conclusion, I strongly encourage you to use Pink is for Boys in your classroom because I would have loved to hear that one of Charlie's classmates or even a teacher stood up for him and said boldly, pink is for boys and girls. Thank you for watching.